Oh, good afternoon. So yeah, I was here last year. Uh, my name is Leif Bloomquist, and I'm passionate about uh, retro game development, specifically on the Commodore 64. Uh, but I've got a couple of uh, twists uh, in my game development that I'll uh, talk a bit about. So last year I went into a lot, did a lot more deeper dive in the game and my motivations and so on. I'll repeat some of that for people who weren't here uh, last year, and then we'll get into a little more of what's new, and uh, we'll do a live demo of the game. Okay, so why the Commodore 64? So similar to you know the Atari 2600, we've now gone from 16K to 64K. So I adore my Commodore 64. It was my very first computer, and being exposed to computing and programming, my parents had a rule, 50% of the time programming, the other 50% games. And that paid off massively, and, and it led me to a very rewarding uh, career in software engineering in aerospace. So a bit about the machine. It's the best-selling computer of all time, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, around 17 million sold, though I think the Raspberry Pi is uh, set to overtake that. Released in 1982, and there's some of the uh, the specs, and you know those uh, graphical limitations give you a certain uh, aesthetic that I am you know, very uh, fond of. But uh, the Commodore 64 was famous for games. There's 25,000 uh, titles uh, out there. There's a great website called the Game Base 64 that has them all cross-referenced uh, by author and genre, and many many of these were uh, roguelikes, of course. It's genuinely fun to program on. You're programming bare metal, uh, machine language, and with the, uh, yeah, as with the Atari 2600 uh, from the previous talk, it's very well documented after 30 years of reverse engineering and tinkering. So there's a lot of neat uh, tricks you can tease out of it. And there's a very active community. There's a lot of homebrew, there's collectors, there's gaming, and a lot of hardware hacking. So the hardware hacking leads me to this uh, neat device called the C64 NIC Plus. This put, lets you hook your Commodore 64 up to the internet, because why not? And uh, just in the last couple of years, there's now Wi-Fi adapters for the Commodore 64. <laughs> Again, why not? That's fun. But people were developing lots of tools. So now you, you have your Commodore on the network. There were file transfer, you know, cross-development, terminals, chat. That's great, but the Commodore was known for games. So how about some games? So I developed a handful of games just to explore the possibilities of you know, taking this gaming platform and opening it up to you know, multiplayer. So I played around with some uh, shoot 'em up games, a uh, car racing game, a uh, space shoot 'em up. But then I came to a roguelike. And that's how I ended up here because I'm like, I need to find some algorithms for doing a roguelike. I found roguelike dev subreddit, and here I am. So what if the other characters in the dungeon that you saw were other players? You could interact with them. You can go on quests together with them. You can team up with them uh, against monsters. You can work together to solve puzzles. Leave each other tools, clues, and maybe even share equipment. I think that would be really cool. But I've also taken it to the next level in the last uh, year, so I wanted to ha open it up to many platforms. For some reason, not very many people have a Commodore 64 with a network card at home. <laughs> but So that's what I started with, was the Commodore 64 as the first uh, client. But then to open it up to a much wider audience, I ported it to JavaScript, but kept the same gameplay, the same controls, the same character set, the same sound effects to recreate that retro experience as accurately as possible. But then now I've got one interface layer, if you will, I can open it up more. So there's also a Telnet client. <laughs> so if you want the, you know, the uh, ASCII, you know, you know, original rogue look to it, you can go into the game. But what I want to emphasize here is these are all connected to the same game instance. So you can have someone on, you know, on Linux in a Telnet terminal or on a VT100 terminal and you're playing head-to-head -head with somebody on a Commodore, or maybe somebody on a Mac, or somebody on a PC. But since it runs in JavaScript, it'll also work on mobile. So I'm starting to push this multi-platform thing as kind of to its ridiculous limits. I want to be able to have someone with an iPhone 11 and a mainframe and a Commodore all playing together. <laughs> that would just be amazing. And of course, other retro platforms. So you can get similar network hardware for uh, you know, Apple and uh, Atari and so on. So I eventually want to get to making clients for those. 
a couple of unique uh, gameplay mechanics I've introduced, partly uh, for the, uh, to emphasize the multiplayer aspect. So you have, your inventory is only two items. You can carry something in your left hand and in your right hand. So you can double up, uh, you know, the uh, swords or shields stack. And there's different things you can find in the game, po uh, potions, keys, gold, what have you. But that's it. That's your only inventory. If you want to carry more stuff, and I want to start introducing puzzles where you need to have a potion and a key and a sword and this, get more friends to join in the game and carry stuff along. And I, and I found just with some play testing that people naturally fall into uh, you know, different roles that you would see in a D&D you know, fantasy type setting. Someone would grab the two swords and go and be the fighter and other people hold the potions and be the healer. You can use or inspect uh, items, as those are two separate actions. And of course, because it's a C64, you can play with a joystick. So playing with the roguelike with a joystick is kind of a neat uh, experience. And uh, I wanted to capture the feeling of sitting in a basement playing multiplayer Commodore games from when I was a kid, and I'm just doing that through Discord chat. So what's new since last year? I got a lot of really great feedback when I demoed the game last year. So. Uh, a lot of you know, play testers right here, and they gave me lots of suggestions, so please do the same again this year. Uh, most, the most important uh, change is uh, better feedback on the combat, so it's rather than just a bunch of sound effects, you actually get a stat, you did this damage, you did this, you did this, you missed. I've introduced some new uh, types of items that uh, make the gameplay kind of fun. Uh, people would see things, it's very hard to be descriptive, like I. One of the first graphics you'll see is a little sign, and people are like, is that a hammer? No, it's a sign. So when you walk over it, it tells you what it is. And it fixed a bunch of bugs, as one does. And working on a mobile version. It's not perfect yet. You can log into the game on your phone, and you'll see it. But uh, the movement commands are uh, still very awkward. Lots to do. I won't go through these in a lot of uh, detail. Oh yeah, I still need a name for the game. It's still the multiplayer roguelike. I thought it's space of a year I'd think of a name, but a lot of real life happened and I didn't. Uh, mobile version's a little better, not there yet. I want to introduce more uh, types of clients, different computers, different character types. Right now you're all this generic guy. More monsters, I have them all on the drawing board, I just need to code them up. Uh, I want to introduce ranged weapons. So that's a little bit uh, different from your traditional roguelike, but I think that'll be uh, kind of neat. Uh, little improvements to the algorithms, introduce a star movement, uh, more uh, uh, limiting your vision, and so on. And a much larger dungeon. Right now, it's, uh, it's procedurally generated, but it's a very small level. Just to prove the concept, I want to make it like a thousand times bigger. And lots of little details. This is a work in progress. I'm going to be introducing features, see how people like it, and you know, tweak it, and it'll kind of evolve. But the thing about having it networked is everyone who's playing it is always playing the latest version, including on the Commodore, it automatically updates. So I'm looking for some help. If uh, anyone's uh, intrigued by this and wants to uh, join in the game or at least give me some suggestions, here's some things I'm looking for. Oh yeah, and a name. <laughs> but the code is all up on GitHub. So if anyone wants to take a look or uh, fork it and uh, add some stuff, that would be amazing. And here's how to get in touch with me. My blog is jammingsignal.com. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, there's my email. So just a couple of uh, credits uh, to uh, the folks who wrote the networking code. Uh, you know, play testers, uh, graphics. I don't even know the guy's real name. His code name is QOWL Atlas. And various friends. Uh, I already mentioned the subreddit. And the organizers of uh, Roguelike. This is amazing. And a little plug for an event we have coming up in Toronto this year. It's the World of Commodore, a whole convention like this devoted to Commodore 64. Uh, that's December 7th, uh, 2019, worldofcommodore.ca. All right, enough talking. Let's play. So uh, if you see a few, few people with laptops, you can go to this website and play right now. I did this last year and the server didn't crash. So, uh, And for if you want the Telnet experience, there it is. And probably no one will be doing this real time, but if you go to that URL, there's also a download for the C64 binary. And the game is winnable, so you can just run around in the, in the game and hack and slash the monsters, but there is an end goal. Oh. Now, let's 
see if I can bring up Chrome on this thing. How am I for time? I am going to try and do a thing. You need a browser? It was open earlier. Oh my god. Okay, 30 people, that's amazing. Oh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Am I getting able to see both? Okay, I'm trying to play off the screen here. So this is why we need the different, uh, I need the different uh, character types so I can, you can tell who you are. Uh, and for, what it, for what it's worth, it is player versus player. but nobody's got a weapon, so you're not going to be able to do any uh, appreciable damage. Let's see if I can fight my way along. Okay, let's all shove down this hallway. Oh, wait, wait, keep going, keep going. Oh, I'm stuck. Working away along. Okay, so somehow someone has to go down around, get the key, and come back and unlock the door. <laughs> and so one of the challenges of the of a multiplayer platform, though, is you wouldn't want someone to open the door, with, you know, with the key and then run through and take off, or lock it behind them and run off with the key. So the game, uh, so the key has a magic property. When you use it, it teleports back to its origin for the first player or for the next player to use, and then the door closes again after 10 seconds. So that uh, design decision seems to have been my undoing today. <laughs> 42. Wow. <laughs> Wait, while we're just thrashing around. Uh, Let's, uh, let's do questions now. We'll cool. Over. Yeah, we have time for a few questions. Oh, I will mention the game is uh, set up over there for the arcade, and obviously tons of people were able to log in with their phones. So, yeah, play around with it at the ar arcade. Hopefully it'll be a little less crowded. And look forward to people's uh, feedback and questions. Hey. Uh, Cool effort on the crossplay. That's really amazing. And I was wondering if there's any shared code between the Commodore implementation and the other platforms. Uh, there is not. No, the Commodore code is pure uh, 6502 assembler, and then the uh, web interface is uh, JavaScript with web sockets. So, no. The uh, in terms of shared code, though, like the f like the uh, the binary that represents the font is exactly shared between the two. Uh, whoever is not currently playing the game, uh, <laughs> any more questions? We have time for maybe one more. <laughs> Sorry, everyone's too busy playing. Oh, wait, we have one. Just, I can't shake the feeling that I've seen a multiplayer real time uh, roguelike like this before. Is there any precedent for this? Uh, there was, yeah, there's a couple that I've read about just online that I looked briefly at for uh, in, for inspiration. Uh, there's one called TomeNet that people were telling me about. That's uh, similarly, but it's also the... Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, oh! Did somebody make it through? Oh, well. Wish I could become that person. Okay, somebody go get the key again and let's... Uh, Uh, so I was saying with the uh, TomeNet, the uh, yeah, I, I've just looked at it very briefly, briefly but the uh, the uh, it's still turned. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you gotta go get the key. Whoa! All right. Okay. 
to get past this guy and down into the next level. So this is where, so I think of the top level as kind of a tutorial level where you have to step through it and go through those simple motions to get into the real game, just to get a feel for the controls. Yeah, so now we're, now we're off to go. Yeah, and so, yeah, there's little monsters running around. Let's find some other players down here. Oh, there's somebody. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know if you've got a weapon or not, but that's, well, that's, like, that's clearly yeah, something on one of you, but uh, I wanted to get the game eventually to a point where you would run into a character and you don't know, is this an NPC or is this a guy? Okay, now I'm set. Okay, so who's that? Quack, quack. Oh, missed them. <laughs> okay. Thank you so there much, you Leif. You're welcome. Uh